In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my favorite science-backed method and tips for how you can prevent heat damage in your hair. I'm bringing you guys nothing but straight facts today. And of course, I'm going to be doing all this alongside practically showing you guys how I adapt these tips to my personal blowout method and how you can do the same thing to yours. Now, the footage you will see of me blowing out my hair was filmed a few weeks ago, lest you be confused. That being said, you probably still want to stick around so you don't miss any vital steps in this method, but... Hey, what do I know? It's just my humble opinion. Also, if you hear the sound of wind and rain, don't worry, it's just British summertime. Anyway, how about we get into this video? Now, when it comes to heat styling and avoiding heat damage, there are two main things that I consider. The first thing is finding and using a good heat protectant. And the second thing is the temperature and the method with which you administer the heat to your hair. Now, I'm going to save the first half of that equation for another video, but today I really wanted to focus on the heat itself and how best to use it, specifically within the context of blow drying. So when I was looking through journals to see what kind of information I could find on this topic, I came across this 2011 study published in the Annals of Dermatology that looked into hair shaft damage from heat and drying time of hair dryer. And in case it wasn't already obvious from the title, the objective was essentially to find out the best way to blow dry hair without creating so much damage. So basically what they did is they shampooed hair using a sulfate containing shampoo and then proceeded to dry it. And they did this process once a day, every day, for 30 days. And for this experiment, they had five test groups. Of course, the first test group was a no treatment test group. So this was the control group. The second test group was shampooed and then air dried at room temperature. The third was dried with a hair dryer at a distance of 15 centimeters for 60 seconds. So it was about 47 degrees Celsius. The fourth test group was dried for 30 seconds at a distance of 10 centimeters away from the hair. And it was about 61 degrees Celsius. And then the fifth and final test group was dried for 15 seconds at a distance of five centimeters away from the hair at a temperature of about 95 degrees Celsius. So after 30 days of doing this over and over again to the different hair groups, here's what they found. Unsurprisingly enough, there was no damage whatsoever done to the hair that was in the control group. Similarly, compared to the control group, there was also little to no changes noted with the hair that was blow dried at 47 degrees Celsius. However, more obvious lifting and cracks were noted in the hair that was treated at 61 degrees Celsius and even more lifting cracks and holes to the cuticle layer were noted for the hair that was treated at 95 degrees Celsius. Go figure. Now, given the fact that most commercial hair dryers start at 65 degrees Celsius, this is something we probably want to be mindful of. In addition to this, the hair that was treated in group five at 95 degrees Celsius ended up experiencing severe damage to the outermost layer of the cuticle such that it was punched out. Whereas this level of damage was not noted in any of the hairs that were treated at lower temperatures. It is worth noting, however, that out of all of the control groups, whether the ones that were not treated at all with blow drying or the ones that were treated at 95 degrees centigrade, none of the hairs in any of these groups experienced any damage to the cortex. And as you can see, that's probably because the cuticle layer is several layers deep. Fun fact, your cuticle layer is not just one layer. Anyway, now you know. Now we've already established that compared to the control group, the hair that was treated with 95 degrees had considerably more cuticle damage, more lifts to the cuticle layer than did the hair that was treated with 47 degrees. So we've got all of that covered, but here's the crazy part. Only the hair that was air dried showed signs of damage to the cell membrane complex. Now for anyone who's not familiar with what the cell membrane complex is, it's essentially the glue that holds your hair cells together. So safe to say it's pretty essential. I don't even know if and how that makes a difference, but it's quite astounding that the only group that suffered this kind of damage was the group that was naturally air dried. I don't know. Make of it what you will. I guess this just goes to show that literally no matter what you do, you cannot avoid hair damage. Just write it off as wear and tear at this point. Now, in addition to this, another study that this particular one cites noticed similar results when they blow dried hair at different temperatures, noting the most damage done to the cuticle with temperatures above 85 degrees Celsius, no damage done to the cuticle at temperatures below 50 degrees Celsius, and potentially also little to no damage done to the cuticle layer at temperatures up to 65 degrees Celsius. But the main interesting thing that this other study found that is very important for us to note is the fact that hair surface temperature increase rate seemed to affect how much damage was done to the cuticle layer. For example, if the hair surface temperature was increased at a slow rate, say for example, 10 degrees Celsius per minute up to 75 degrees Celsius, there was little to no crack formation on the cuticle layer whatsoever. 
However, if a sample of hair that was 25 degrees Celsius was suddenly exposed to 75 degrees Celsius from a hairdryer, the hair would immediately show signs of new cracks from thermal damage. This is extremely interesting to note because if we take the fact from the previous study that hair that was treated at 61 degrees still showed signs of cracking and lifting, then it's very helpful for us to know that we could potentially avoid this just by slowing the rate of temperature increase to our hair surface. 21st century science, people. Now really quickly, before we get into my three-step blowout method using these tips, if by any chance you're finding this video somewhat helpful so far, then do me a favor and hit that like button. And whilst you're there, you might want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any of my science-backed hair care tips every Friday. Anyway, let's get back to business. Now I do want to say really quickly that I am going to be using my river to blow out my hair. No, this video is not a sponsored video. I wish. And yes, I genuinely do love my Rev Air <laughs> for a number of reasons that I already covered in my comparison video. So again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that here. But if you have seen that video, you'll know that one of the things that I tested with the Rev Air was how much less hot it got at its low, medium and high settings when compared to standard hair dryers. That being said, you can still use this method that I'm about to show you with your standard hair dryer. And I am going to share with you guys tips and notes on how you can adapt these findings in my method, whether you're using a Rev Air, a Dyson, or your standard handheld hair dryer. I mean, the studies that we did just go through all use normal hair dryers anyway, so you're safe. Okay, so before we get into this, I just want to set some ground rules so that I know that we're all on the same page when it comes to knowing what temperatures our hair would be most safe at versus what temperatures our hair is most likely to get damaged with. The main things to remember here is that we can consider our safe zone to be temperatures up to 65 degrees Celsius. Or if you work in Fahrenheit, that's about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, anything above this, we cannot guarantee will be safe and will probably inflict some sort of moderate damage to the cuticle layer. And then on the higher end of things, what we're trying to not go beyond is temperatures above 85 degrees Celsius or 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And now that we have an understanding of where our safe zones are, the only other main thing that we want to consider here is making sure that we do not make such a drastic jump by applying 75 degree heat to 25 degree room temperature hair. So I am going to be working with freshly washed hair that I have applied a light leave-in to as well as a good heat protectant. Like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail in that and I'll save that for another video, but I did want to make sure that I said that and I wasn't just blow drying my hair straight without moisturizing it first or applying some sort of heat protectant on it first. So I'm basically going to be assuming that my damp hair is about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. So working in small sections, I always try to start on the lowest heat setting. So the temperature is as close to my hair temperature as possible and we can avoid that jump that we were talking about that causes cracks to the cuticle layer. Now I believe the Rev S temperature ranges between 38 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius from its lowest to highest heat settings when there isn't any hair in it. However I did notice that those temperatures will increase the more hair you have in the tube as well as how close it is to your scalp. So to keep it as close to that low temperature range I work in small sections and leave about an inch of space between it and my scalp for more air to be able to pass freely through the vacuum and keep the temperature down. Now after about a minute or so, once my hair has dried a bit but is still somewhat damp, I will switch up to the higher heat setting for about 30 seconds, again leaving some space in between my scalp and the vacuum to keep the temperature down. Now keep in mind, even on this high heat setting, the temperature is still likely no more than 70 degrees using this method, which is perfect and exactly what we want because we're still within the safe zone. If you are using a normal normal hair dryer, you can use these exact same steps. Just make sure that you are holding the dryer at a distance, using the same distances from the study as a guideline. So from our first study, we noted that the hair suffered little to no cuticle cracks or damage when the hair dryer was placed on a low to medium setting at about 15 centimeters away from the hair. And even if you can't get your hands on an electronic thermometer or a thermometer at all, like I said, the average commercial hair dryer ranges from about 65 degrees on its lower heat settings to about 100 degrees on its higher settings. So even if you don't know exactly what the temperature is, keeping it at a distance will put some air between the source of the hot air and your hair, bringing the temperature down significantly. Now the last thing you will see me doing here where I've turned up the heat to the highest heat setting, in the final 10 seconds or so, what you'll see me doing is bringing it right up to my roots and using the mouth 
mouth with the vacuum to make sure that my roots are dry and as smooth as they can possibly be. This is purely for cosmetic reasons and just because I want to make sure that my roots are also dry because I haven't been taking the vacuum all the way up to my scalp. Now the final thing that I want to say is bear in mind that these results were what happened to the hair after 30 days of constant shampooing and drying and shampooing and drying and shampooing and drying over and over and over again. No moisturizer was used, no heat protectant was used. So these results are essentially a representation of the worst damage your hair can experience if you decided you wanted to shampoo and blow dry for 30 days straight. And if that's the decision that you've made for yourself, then Godspeed we need to be having a whole completely different conversation. But for the majority of people, I think a reasonable goal is to aim to keep your blowouts to a maximum of about four to six blowouts every single year. Now, if you consider the fact that your hair is constantly growing for about five years before it sheds, then blowing out your hair about five times a year for five years will add up to no more than 25 blowout sessions in your hair's entire lifespan. So with the help of a good heat protectant and also a solid hair care regimen to make sure that you are taking good care of your hair outside of blow drying it every now and again, this should be more than fine and you really shouldn't have to worry about experiencing heat damage if you do things this way. Balance is key. We want all the benefits and versatility with the minimum amount of damage. Anyway, that's all from me today, guys. I really hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Mwah.